By virtually any measure, the quality of games, movies, and television shows released in 2023 has been outstanding, aside from the treatment of the industry workers who create them. That banner year is reflected in the diverse collection of 10 out of 10 scores IGN has awarded, totaling 17 for the year. It's a mix of new and old, exciting premieres and grand finales, remakes, adaptations, sequels, and spiritual successes to some all-time greats across all mediums. Action, drama, horror, anime, sci-fi, and fantasy are all represented. And while there are no full-on comedies on the list, there are plenty of laughs to be found among them. And to have Metroid, Castlevania, Resident Evil, Zelda, and Baldur's Gate representing our highest scoring games of 2023 makes it feel like a year that celebrates gaming history, but with decidingly modern takes on the classics. Is anybody out there? Scavenger's Reign from creators Joseph Bennett and Charles Hüttner sets human drama on an alien planet when a group of survivors crash land on a terrifying new world. As the survivors converge on the landing site of their spacecraft, they are met by terrifying and beautiful native creatures and plants and see firsthand the kind of interconnected natural web they have stumbled into. The further they go, the more the gorgeously animated world integrates them into its environments as they learn to adapt to their new home setting the scene for one of the best science fiction shows ever made. Attack on Titan comes to a close with an epic, feature-length finale that encapsulates everything that made this story so popular. The big scope action is some of the best in the entire 10-year saga, with a stunning mix of 2D and 3D animation that brings a world-ending rumbling to life with terrifyingly awesome results. Eren's actual plan and motivation finally come to light, concluding one of the most fascinating character stories in modern anime. With new insights that make him everything we thought to be, and yet also something different and more understandable. Combining moments of rousing triumph with absolute horror and despair, this is the ideal way for Attack on Titan to end. It's time. Mike Flanagan returns to form in the fall of the House of Usher, delivering a deliciously macabre and contemporary reimagining of the works of Edgar Allan Poe. Classic tales marry with modern commentary in a limited series that delivers at every turn. You'll scream, you'll cry, and once it's over, you might just start it all over from the beginning again. This is coming from a place of wanting to start fresh and clean. The Bear Season 2 is perfect. From the performance to the pacing, the second season provides propulsive stakes for the story to build towards, while having the confidence to invest in side journeys that make the ensemble of characters far richer, and best prepared for the ultimate challenge of making the bear succeed. In its second half, Vinland Saga Season 2 becomes a masterclass in storytelling. It takes the strong foundation of pacing and character work done in the first half and ratchets up the tension with an impending battle that brings a boil to Thorfinn's transformation from Agent of Death to True Warrior. Aided by stunning voice acting, strong direction, and stunning animation, this season sets a standard for modern anime. Something faster, lighter, meaner, wilder. And I'm gonna do it! From in here, whether you are, you pirates! The final season of Succession is one of the most anticipated television shows of 2023, and its first four episodes suggest it's not holding anything back. Powerhouse performances from the Roy clan offer a dazzling masterclass of buttoned up emotions, competing with years of desperately craving approval from the family's patriarch. Each department behind the cast is at the top of its game. From regular succession director Mark Mylord to composer Nicholas Brittell. Swinging from comedy to drama helps keep the material fresh even when dealing with an ongoing power struggle. And just when you think specific stories might become repetitive, something alters the course. Stop ganging up on me like you're Lennon and McCartney and I'm George. I'm John, mother. From the first episode of Succession's final journey, it was clear that Jesse Armstrong was not holding anything back. Killing Logan Roy so early in the game was a power move that proved wildly successful, as it gave space for dynamics among potential replacements to rise and fall. Not to mention the emotional rollercoaster of every character, particularly the Roy siblings, grappling with this tremendous loss. After the ongoing cycle of negotiations and betrayal, it was impossible to predict how this story would conclude, and yet the choice to end it as it did felt incredibly fitting. There is no weak link in the ensemble cast, 
and there have been several tour de force performances from Sarah Snook, Kieran Culkin and Matthew McFadden, among many others. Nicholas Brittle's score remains one of the best in recent memory, and the scale of the season is as impressive as the Norwegian mountain backdrop. Unlike Kendall Roy, Jesse Armstrong has gone out on top. Attack on Titan returns with the first half of its explosive, apocalyptic finale, and it's better than ever. The animation is firing on all cylinders, the themes are laid bare, the emotions are at an all-time high, and the result is one hour of heartbreak, excitement, and awe-inspiring thrills. Make no mistake, this is Attack on Titan at its peak, and if the finale can deliver like Part 3 does, it will cement itself as a defining anime of a generation. Here's the thing, Frank. If I feed you, then every bum you talk to about it is going to show up here looking for a free lunch. And this is not an Arby's. Well, Arby's didn't have free lunch, it was a restaurant. A masterfully told love story set in a world designed to leave them unwritten, Episode 3 of HBO's The Last of Us is a sensational hour of television. It shines a light on a chapter previously shrouded in resentment, instead offering two characters a brighter, happier time together. Nick Offerman and Murray Bartlett take on leading role duties with elegance, leaving an unmissable beautiful mark on the show as we're shown a side of humanity that makes what Joel and Ellie are fighting for worth saving. It's an episode, just like love, that lives long in the memory after the experience. I think there's a chance that when we push that button, we destroy the world. Chances are near zero. Near zero. A biopic in constant freefall, Oppenheimer is Christopher Nolan's most abstract yet most exacting work, with themes of guilt writ large through apocalyptic IMAX nightmares that grow both more enormous and more intimate as time ticks on. A disturbing, mesmerizing vision of what humanity is capable of bringing upon itself, both through its innovation and through its capacity to justify any atrocity. 42 regular, wasn't it? Yeah. It seemed like an impossible task, but the Baba Yaga has a history of delivering on those. John Wick Chapter 4 stands above its predecessors, and the past decade's worth of action films as a whole, as a modern epic, something that Keanu Reeves and Chad Stalowski have been driving at since 2014. Wick's world war is bursting at the seams with creative, thrilling stage action choreography and cinematography, perfectly pitched performances from an outstanding and unforgettable cast of allies and villains heralded by a merciless Bill Skarsgård, all without losing its grip on the sensitivity that keeps John's struggles for absolution at the heart of every bullet fired and every edged weapon swung. Slide Chapter 4 as a gold coin across the table and see what happens when John Wick lands a perfect shot. This ship is crashing. Do you intend to die for a stranger? I don't want to say every CRPG going forward should aspire to be like Baldur's Gate 3. Not everything needs to be nearly this big and ambitious, or even this dense. But it is a landmark moment in the genre, and if I had to point to one paragon that I would like everyone else making these to take inspiration from, this is absolutely it. I waited 14 years for the stars to align again, so that I could get the ideal mix of crunchy, tactical, old-school RPG combat, an epic and well-written story with complex characters and lots of meaningful choices, and a level of polish and cinematic presentation that let me see the sweat and the sorrow on characters' faces in their darkest hours. Plenty of other games have partially completed that list, but the last time they all came together was Dragon Age Origins in 2009. And I can finally say that game and its Infinity Engine predecessors have a worthy successor that not just matched the RPG greatness, but surpassed it. Baldur's Escape 3 is just about everything I could have asked for. I know why I am here. It's something only I can do. The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom is an unfathomable follow-up to one of the greatest games ever made, somehow improving on it in nearly every way. Be that with a simple quality of life improvements, a genuinely exciting story, or wildly creative new builder mechanics that make you rethink what's possible. It both revamps old ground and introduces vast new areas so immersed it somehow makes me wonder if Breath of the Wild was actually all that big. With an almost alarming number of tasks to complete, mysteries to discover and delightful distractions to keep you from ever reaching that place you naively thought you were heading. Nintendo has followed up a triumph with a triumph, expanding and evolving a world that already felt full beyond expectation and raising the bar even higher into the clouds. Where's everyone going? Bingo?
Whether you are a fan of the original or a newcomer with a hankering of some action-heavy horror of the highest quality, Resident Evil 4 is like a parasite-riddled Spaniard. A total no-brainer. Its combat is friction-free, but no less stress-inducing thanks to its ferocious cast of characters. Its story rapidly shuttles through a series of action scenes that are diverse in structure, but uniformly unwavering in intensity. And its world is rich in detail and full of fun and often snarling surprises. Its improvements over the original are too numerous to list, from simple quality of life changes to completely overhauled boss fight mechanics, and with the exception of the disappointingly diminished personality of the merchant, the team at Capcom has barely put a foot wrong. What are you buying? Only the most relentlessly exciting Resident Evil adventure of all time, that's been rebuilt, refined, and realized to the full limits of its enormous potential. A wise choice, mate. Dead Cells Return to Castlevania is a shining blueprint of how to do a crossover right. It celebrates the history of the franchise while mixing it with Dead Cells' own identity to make something that's more the sum of its already excellent parts. Not only does this collaboration feel like it makes total sense, the utmost care has clearly been put into every aspect, whether it be the still fantastic monster slaying combat or the huge number of secrets waiting to be found inside. Regardless of whether this is the last content update Dead Cells will get or not, Motion Twin and Evil Empire deserve to receive their flowers and proudly take a massive bow. Metroid Prime has been one of my favourite games for decades, but I'm still shocked that its bones are so strong. 21 years later, Metroid Prime Remastered had to do so little beyond modernising the controls and updating the graphics to become one of the best games that you can buy once again. This ultimate solo mission is a respite from the noise of hint-giving companions and lengthy cinematic cutscenes that make up much of today's single-player games. Those things have their place, but Metroid Prime Remastered shows that you can tell a story and create a grand adventure by building an amazing world and creating unique and fun tools to explore with. I strongly encourage you to delve into Metroid Prime Remastered and get lost. Asgard's Wrath 2 is a full-fledged VR open-world RPG I've always wanted to play, and for that matter, it's one of the best RPGs in any perspective I've played in years. With four unique characters and stories, fantastic and satisfying combat, intricate and rewarding RPG systems, a great story and an entire roguelite dungeon crawling mode thrown in just to show off, this masterpiece completely nails almost everything that it tries, much of which has never been pulled off in VR. The MetaQuest 3's killer app has arrived, and even after more than 90 hours throwing squids at gloriously shredded lizards and whipping across gaps, I'm still eager to jump back in. And if you like that video and you want to find out more about the best movies, TV shows and games that 2023 had to offer, why not check out every IGN award winner? And for everything else, stick with IGN.